uh, this and yes, so thank you very much for presenting me and for inviting me. Um, I will talk uh, very shortly, of course, about the role of inflammation in Alzheimer's disease. And uh, this is, uh, as you may imagine, a challenge because inflammation is already a very uh, large field of research, in particular in Alzheimer's disease, but also in other uh, neurodegenerative diseases and uh, conditions related to cognitive decline. So, but, um, and for this reason, I will not present the wall. Uh, um, so all the aspects uh, that may be relevant here, but I will fo focus on some important, uh, more recent results uh, in the field. And actually I will start with uh, maybe the most important uh, question, which is, which is um, whether this is relevant. So, um, um, Neuroinflammation uh, occurs in AD, as you know. So actually, it was uh, there, it was first described uh, even by Alzheimer's uh, by Alois Alzheimer itself. In the first uh, patients, he uh, examined postmortem. So and he already described inflammation. So microglia activation surrounding the uh, amyloid plaques, and this is what is well established now occurring in. Uh, in, uh, in, in the brains of, uh, of people with Alzheimer's pathology. So you have here a graphical representation from uh, one study we've, we have published, but uh, uh, this is very established. So, and the question was for a long time, whether this uh, observation so that there is inflammation, whether this is a bystander in, uh, as a phenomenon, or is it uh, an important contributor, not only to pathology, but maybe also to clinical manifestation and progression over time. So, and there, there is some evidence accumulating now, uh, important evidence. So uh, just to mention GWAS, where uh, genes were associated with um, uh, amyloid pathology, of course, tau pathology, lipid metabolism, and vascular injury, and some other uh, seemingly less important uh, aspects, but also as a major uh, factor uh, seemingly contributing to the risk um, polymorphisms in uh, in uh, genes related to neuroinflammation microglia response and in particular so uh, two that you probably all know so APOE and uh, uh, 3M2. Um, there is also epidemiological evidence so it was observed that people treated with uh, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs of a longer time had lower uh, risk of developing AD dementia. And also there is more recent evidence that uh, there are some markers, actually markers of microglia response or of um, inflammatory activity that may be, that, that occur in, Alzheimer's, in, in, a, in uh, Alzheimer's patients and that are related with faster cognitive decline over time. So, um, and there is also evidence now from um, imaging studies using ligands um, that show inflammation. And one can see that actually uh, this is stage dependent inflammation occurs in, in the brains of people with Alzheimer's pathology. And uh, in particular in the early stages, it is associated with, uh, with amyloid uh, pathology, but later seemingly uh, this is not the case. So there is some evidence accumulating, but how uh, one can imagine the interaction with other aspects of pathology or the contribution to pathology of inflammatory processes. So to make it uh, very simplistic, of course, so it's, it's about activation of microglia in response to different triggers. So um, in particular to misfolding proteins such, such as amyloid, for, uh, for example. So, and, uh, with the microglia activation, you have an uh, inflammatory response, which may be even uh, helpful and benefic in the, in the first, uh, uh, so to start, let's say this, this, this way, but um, actually uh, over time, it becomes, it changes also in, in, the, in, in its nature, in its uh, uh, way to act and may have the deleterious effect on, uh, on uh, the, the brain tissue and on the uh, neurons in particular and uh, contribute to tau hyperphosphorylation 
and to contribute also with, uh, to neural injury and, and death finally. So this is, uh, of course, very, a very simple uh, model and um, that um, one have, have, so researchers have tried to, to, to describe in more details and to, to investigate in more details in, um, also in humans. And uh, this is from one study we performed. Uh, so focusing on, on one marker, this was macrophage migration in Vittori factor. Uh, MIF, and we have seen in for this particular uh, marker, which which is a molecule that coordinates uh, some aspects of inflammation of the immune response, and we have seen actually that uh, in uh, in people with uh, cognitive impairment due to Alzheimer's pathology, we have a significant increase in the cerebrospinal fluid, and uh, we try to correlate this with different markers in the cerebrospinal fluid, and we've seen that this is not so much associated with amyloid. We expected this, but it was more associated with tau and hypophosphorylated tau. So those are the correlation, uh, correlations which were also significant after corrections. Uh, but so it seems that there are association pathology, but our question was also, is it relevant for cognitive decline? So, and we have, uh, assessed um, this participants, so uh, patients from the memory clinic um, in Lausanne, and we have seen that actually at uh, 18 months, it was a difference in the in the changes in the clinical uh, um, cognition, uh, depending on the on the level of uh, of macrophagation inhibitory factor in the in the CSF initially. So, and this was also the case even after taking, to, in, taking into consideration aspects such as uh, amyloid and tau markers. So probably, so this, this indicates that there is, in, in humans, uh, there is relevance of this inflammatory activity as measured in this case by one single marker for the evolution of symptoms in, uh, over time. So of course, uh, now we are able um, to assess more than one single marker, and it is important because we can, with this, we can address inflammation as in, in much more complexity, and it is a very complex and dynamic uh, process or uh, a multitude of processes. And here we performed a study where we assessed 38 markers of neuroinflammation in both CSF and uh, peripheral blood, and we found uh, six out of this. Uh, markers that were uh, relatively strongly associated, again, not so much with amyloid pathology, so amyloid markers, but uh, with tau and hypophosphorylated tau, indicating that there is a close relationship with, uh, with neural generation and tau hypophosphorylation of these particular markers. So, of course, I will not go into the, the detail, but this is just to show you that, of course, one can um, detect signatures, inflammatory signatures that are relevant in uh, relation to Alzheimer's pathology. So for the question was whether this can be relevant also for clinical practice, so whether we can use uh, those inflammatory markers maybe in combination, this was uh, the approach here, uh, to uh, actually to, to, to diagnose AD. So in this case, focusing, so they tell, um, defined as the presence of AD pathology, core AD pathology in the brain. And as you can see here, this is useful. And uh, in, uh, in, uh, if you use CSF inflammatory markers, um, this is in blue, you have a reference model where we included several available uh, other measures and we can improve the, the prediction of AD pathology by adding those uh, inflammatory markers. And more important because practically more, more relevant is you can do this also using uh, blood markers, inflammatory markers in blood. And as you can see, we have uh, a significant increase in, in the um, predictive performance of the model. So one important aspect uh, is that of course, um, this is not, as a phenomenon, this is not isolated in the brain, but it has relevance um, for other uh, pathological aspects and vice versa, or other pathological aspects may be relevant for inflammation. And here we assessed uh, um, exploratory the relationships of, of some of those uh, 
CSF markers with white matter lesions, and we have seen that there are uh, correlations with uh, with white, white matter extent of white matter pathology. So uh, suggesting that there is an important link uh, uh, here. So I have I will not show a study where we have seen that. Um, having a more marked inflammatory profile in the CSF is relevant for uh, cognitive uh, performance. So this is the case, and it is also relevant for cognitive decline, not only as I shown this for, for one molecule, but you can see this also for others. Um, we have published this, and uh, here I would like to show you another yet, so not yet published, uh, um, work where we looked not so much on cognitive performance, but actually on non-cognitive neuropsychiatric symptoms, which are very important for us as clinicians uh, because they, they are uh, the main cause of hospitalization, institutionalization. And here we have looked on the role of inflammation uh, as measured as described before for the manifestation of, of neuropsychiatric symptoms. And uh, to, to make it short, we have we have found distinct uh, profiles of molecules, distinct selection of molecules that together uh, best predicted uh, manifestation of neuropsychiatric symptoms, distinct in terms of difference uh, between CSF and serum. So suggesting that both inflammatory activity in CSF and serum uh, may contribute to neuropsychiatric symptoms, but uh, seemingly in different way. Ways and um, we have also seen, and this may be not so obvious for this uh, from this figure, but we have seen that um, actually what what is known from other studies that neuropsychiatric symptoms, uh, if they occur early, uh, they are associated with a more rapid cognitive decline. We have uh, seen this in, also in our court, and we have seen that actually if inflammation uh, was present in uh, in um, in people with NPS, so this inflammatory activity was a partial mediator of the decline. So maybe uh, it is in, probably it is an important factor that contributes to to this observation that uh, occurring neuropsychiatric symptoms are actually associated with a more rapid cognitive decline. So we have seen also. Uh, associations with uh, regional atrophy. I will not go uh, into those details, but we try, of course, to understand how uh, inflammation, in particular in the central nervous system, but not only, as I said, may contribute to the clinical manifestation in terms of cognitive impairment and uh, neuropsychiatric symptoms and finally cognitive decline. So I have to come to an end, but uh, just to to, to tell you that, of course, you have to, to integrate the relevance of inflammation in the context of other pathological aspects. And this is what we tried to do with, um, with uh, a more um, so omics uh, approach. And to make it short, we have seen that, of course, you have for different neuropsychiatric symptoms, different contributions. And you may have, in particular, in depression, an important contribution of the immune response. This is a, a result from pathway enrichment in a proteomic study. And you, uh, what is here in something like uh, Bordeaux red, uh, you have a small contribution in apathy, uh, but relatively large in terms of uh, percentage of uh, pathway en enrichment in depression. So this may be useful to address uh, inflammation, of course, in the context of other pathologies. And uh, finally, the question would be, uh, is it also possible to, to interfere with uh, this relationship between uh, inflammation and brain pathology, other brain pathology, and also inflammation and more important um, clinical manifestation? And this is a, a uh, short overview about the studies that are ongoing. So these are two publications that show that actually, so uh, inflammation- I think there, there are a lot of questions that we can address because uh, we are a little bit short on time, but I think this is a chicken and egg situation, right? And we okay, will discuss so I, it. And I'm, I'm <laughs> finishing. This is my actually my last slide, just to, to, to tell you that um, 
um, inflammation is, is a, an important focus uh, regarding the ongoing uh, clinical trials. So we can expect uh, inflammation modulating drugs uh, to be available uh, to modulate pathology and also um, clinical manifestation and progression in time. And my conclusion, I will not go through this to answer the questions, but you have already heard all those aspects. So perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. We will discuss this because I think it's inflammation is really central to all this uh, lifestyle factors which are modifiable. So we'll discuss this later in the panel. Thank you.